piece in the magazine's upcoming issue is a deep dive into the dossier compiled by former British spy Christopher Steele on President Donald Trump's ties with Russia. In the piece, Jane writes in part this. In conversations with friends, Christopher Steele said he hoped that in five years he'd look back and laugh at the whole experience. But he tended toward pessimism. No matter how the drama turned out, I will take this to my grave. He often predicted. A longtime friend of Steele's pointed out to me that Steele was in a singularly unenviable predicament. The dossier had infuriated both Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump by divulging allegedly corrupt dealings between them. You've got oligarchs running both superpowers, the friend said, and incredibly, they both hate this same guy. That would kind of be a bummer. It is kind of a <laughs> bummer. His life is sort of a mess at this yeah. point. Yeah, thanks to American politics, really. So, I mean, I think that, you know, one of the things that really surprised me, I was trying to figure out, so did he tell the truth, or is right. he part of some conspiracy to work with Hillary Clinton to bring, you know, Trump down? And and the, the truth, he's really kind of a whistleblower who totally believed what he was saying, and he kept trying to get people, he was saying the Russians were coming. The Russians are coming. And contrary to the conspiracy theories, mostly no one listened. Um, as particularly, I mean, he went, he went to the FBI, and they kind of dragged their feet. Uh, he um, went to the State Department. He went at his memo. So, so let's you know, stop there. Okay. Yeah, he went to the FBI and actually was frustrated because the FBI kept putting it on a, the back burner. Exactly. Why didn't the FBI move on this faster regarding the Russian part of it? It was, you know, I have to say, having been one of the reporters backgrounded by him, um, when Steele did finally meet with reporters very late in the game, it was so hard to believe there was a Russian conspiracy or right. or that this story could be true. And right. it was also it, it it also was very complicated. It there's a lot of Kremlinology and it was it, it took there was a big learning curve in this country. Right. And and the thing is he's a Russian expert. Mm -hmm. And before he wrote that dossier, he was he'd written a big study of Russian meddling in other Western elections. So he was very aware of the possibility of what could happen and what what might be coming our way. J Jane, his work has now obviously been completely politicized, and you've even seen Republican senators uh, Chuck Grassley and Lindsey Graham refer him for criminal prosecution to the Department of Justice, arguing that he committed a crime and lying to the FBI. I'm curious. How does he feel about this now, having done what I assume he thought was kind of a service to the United States and trying to, to reveal what he knew about Donald Trump and connections to Russians? What does he feel about now being accused of being a criminal by politicians here? I, I you know, the thing is, I, I did the first interview with anybody close to him, his, his partner, because he's not, Steele's not allowed to talk, but the partner explained what he thinks, which is, um, you know, it's been shocking to him. It's completely, he, he feels he has tried to be a loyal ally to the United States for 30 years, first working with MI6, sharing mm -hmm. intelligence. He did backgrounders for Michael Hayden. He did a memo that was given on Russia to directly to Obama, and and he feels that it, the, the Western alliance is incredibly important, and he tried to warn them, and he ends up being called a criminal. Wow, it's incredible. And in in the meantime, since he first started talking about this, so much of what he has suggested had happened has happened. Isn't it true? I know. I mean, and it's, and it's piece and you by would, piece by piece. It's falling into place. And it's not just we who feel this, but the intelligence community is saying it. So there are three top former intelligence people in this piece on the record saying so much of it is is it's looking stronger and truer by the day. And the other thing that is in here is the first there's a there's a, a scene where Obama's briefed on this and Comey for the first time is revealed to say that this man is someone who we consider reliable. We know his sources and subsources. We think they're reliable. Wow. And, wow. and his findings are consistent with what we see. Which then So he worked for British he worked for British intelligence and then now he's in this partisan game because the Steele dossier was used by the Clinton administration with hyper partisan. But in your assessment, is he Paul Revere or is he Benedict Arnold? Well, 
<laughs> if you were an American. If, if he were an American, I would say cl much closer to Paul Revere, but the difference is he was actually, instead of riding out on his horse and screaming in public, he was working through channels because he's very, he's a spy. He was trying mm -hmm. to do the right thing, work quietly with the FBI at first, quietly with the State Department, and they just kept putting it in safes and not moving on it. And you said he was so aware of the implications of what could happen. And uh, is it, did he, on the lurid part of the dossier, the sexual allegations, yeah. he was hesitant? Well, his to... partner said to him, do you really want to tell the country this? You know, you are going to be, this is going to have be a problem if we go out and say that, that the president is involved, engaged in this kind of sexual activity. But he's such a straight arrow, his friends say, that he said, we can't cherry pick the intelligence. Right. The, the information is the information. It would distort it if you kept it out. Keep it in. And thus, we have the that part that episode yeah well and again it, we 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 there's absolutely no verification of all of that though there have been other stories uh leading uh in a certain direction over the past couple months i have a question uh, mm -hmm. a question uh, that i've never really figured out exactly whose idea was it to first start this who paid for it? I, you know, we it, it go, you you had breaking news six months ago that a conservative website, the Washington, I think Free Beacon, had mm -hmm. asked him to investigate some things about Trump, and then we had heard that supporters of Marco Rubio uh, had paid money for him to investigate things about Trump. I don't think he was ever tied to Marco specifically, but mm -hmm. some people that mm -hmm. had given Marco money during the primary, and then we heard during the general election, it was Hillary Clinton's campaign that was funding mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's the truth? Well, it's, what's what's it's, the story? It starts with the Free Beacon, which is run by, or largely controlled and owned by Paul Singer, a New York mm -hmm. financier, right. who doesn't like, he's, he's a conservative, mm -hmm. he's a Republican, but he didn't like Trump. Right. And he was hoping to find dirt that would take down Trump from the from the right, from, from the Republican side. So basically. that's where but, the dossier began. Yeah. Actually, it's not, it's where the investigation began, but it's only when Hillary came on that the firm that was doing that investigation, Fusion GPS, then hired uh, they, they then hired Steele. So he, but he did not know he was working for the Hillary campaign for a couple months. He knew he figured he's not an idiot. He figured he right. was working for Democrats trying yeah. to take down Trump, but he didn't know for sure. But he did tell the FBI right away. I think this is probably political. You know, I'm, this is coming out of political. My campaign is, my client is probably political, he said. But he my wasn't going to change it. My, he, it was so not in his, in his interest to slant it because he's in business trying to sell the excellence of his reporting, his, his wow. sources. And, so, if, wow, and so, if it wow. were slanted, uh, and if he were making up uh, facts, whole cloth, he wouldn't have gone to the Federal Bureau of Investigations saying... That's I've got just this information the, for you. That's just what the intelligence community people I interviewed said. They were very impressed. They thought he had to have believed in himself or he wouldn't have subjected it to the FBI. Right. Uh, that's a good way to get now, in trouble. I mean, the thing, yeah, it's a good if, way to get in if trouble. If you're not telling right. the FBI right. the truth, right. there are several right. Right. former Trump administration you officials. You would never have an oppo guy in a political campaign go to the FBI. Like, that well, would never happen. Well, well, yeah. Because you're just asking for trouble, lying to the FBI at any time. Right. And so a bad thing. His firm had gone to the FBI. He had worked with the FBI on a number of investigations in the past, and his firm had also gone to German authorities when they thought they, they were their former intelligence officers. So they were trying to t tip off. They were trying to tip off America. And explain again one more time, really quickly. I missed it. Why didn't the FBI take him seriously at first? I. I, I I don't know. They haven't answered. There are still a lot of unanswered questions. You know who I think is going to figure out the bottom line on all of this is is the special counsel, Robert Mueller, because mm -hmm. he can subpoena records. He right. can get bank records and travel records, and that'll be the final verdict, yeah. I think. The New Yorker's Jane Mayer. Thank you, thank you very Jane. much. Great to be here. And I, under, I understand, Jane, that you, as, as well as Mika, both <laughs> Are we had, had sim, similar problems we, with your yes. chickens. 
Um, if only we have birds. We. I, I. But I said this morning when I heard you talking about chickens, yeah. I said to my husband, maybe chickens. Yeah. Well, I think maybe oh, the time should come. Get, you should get okay. a hen or two that or would five. Be so nice. Or thirteen. <laughs> uh, still ahead this hour in Texas, early primary voting is up 102 percent for Democrats. For Republicans, it's just a fraction of that. We'll go live to that state's capital for what those numbers mean for tomorrow's election and the November midterms. Keep it right here on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.